Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guy video on how to work out weighted mean. The weighted mean allows for some values to contribute more weight to a final average calculation, rather than treat each value equally as the arithmetic mean would do. Let's take a look at the formula. So the formula that we have is the sum of x multiplied by w, so our values multiplied by their weights from our first value to our nth value, and then you want to divide that by the sum of the weights, so the sum of the weights that we have. And perhaps a more simplified version of the formula would be this, sum of x, w over sum of w. Now it's probably best to look at an example to show you what this really means. Now if you have a look at this, we've got three papers, perhaps contributing to part of a final exam. We've got three marks from that. We've got 65 for paper one, 60 for paper two, 58 for paper three. But then we've got a different weighting for each paper. And we can see here that paper three is clearly worth the most. It's worth 50% of the final mark. Paper one being 20% and paper two being 30%. So that would be our weighting. Paper three contributes the most, then paper two, then paper one. So if you worked out, say, the arithmetic mean of just your three scores, 65 plus 60 plus 58, and then divide that by three, the arithmetic mean would be 61. So you would say, well, this person scored an average of 61 in each of their papers. But that wouldn't be taking into account the fact that actually paper one's only worth 20%, paper two, 30%. And paper three is actually worth 50%. And we've actually scored a little bit lower on paper three, which is worth the most. To get a perhaps more representative average or more representative mean, we want to find the weighted mean of our results for this. So let's use the formula. So we want fraction button. And then what we want to do is to multiply each of our scores by their respective weights. There's two ways in which to approach this, so let's just start off by just using the percentages as they are. So we're going to have 65 multiplied by 20. And remember that we're summing, so it's plus 60 times 30 plus 58 times 50. And then on the bottom we want the sum of the weights. Now this is a percentage, so the sum of the weights is going to be 100, 100%. Press equals and here we have our weighted mean 60. So we can see it's actually one lower than the arithmetic mean. So that's taking into consideration the fact that we scored the least on paper three and that was worth the biggest weight, the biggest con contribution to our final mark. So our, actual, our average mark per paper was 60 rather than 61. It's gonna be a little bit more representative. Of course, another way that you could have done this potentially is rather than use the percentages, use the decimal equivalents of that. So 65 multiplied by 0 0.2, uh, plus 60 multiplied by 0 0.3 plus 58 multiplied by 0 0.5 and you can just press equals and get your weighted mean straight away the reason why that works is that obviously as a decimal equivalent 100 percent is just one the whole entire value so it would be over one so we don't need to divide by one we're just going to get the same result so we can just get that by using the decimal equivalents of the weights if we've got the weights as a percentage Let's have a look at a second example. This time the weights aren't going to be a percentage, they're actually going to be actual weights in this case. Um, so this could be a, a product uh, that's maybe being produced and that's sold in kilograms. So if you worked maybe in the retail industry, it could be flour or sugar or something like that. Maybe in the farming industry, it could be a weight of seed. And uh, we can see here there's three different products, so three different prices of the product that we can buy. So we've got 100 kilograms sold of the five pound item. We've got 190 kilograms sold of the seven pound 50 item. And we've got 50 kilograms sold of the 12 pound item. So clearly we can see that there's less of the higher end, the more, most expensive version of our item that's sold. And we've sold the most of the, the middle product, then the cheapest product, and then the most expensive product. Now, once again, if we just worked out the uh, arithmetic mean of this, we want to find the average price. If we just added them together and divide by three, well, you'd get 8.17 to two decimal places, £8.17. But that doesn't take into account that we've actually sold quite a bit less of the expensive £12 product. 
So actually, it would be better to use the weighted mean to take that into account, the fact that we've sold the most £7.50 and the, certainly the least uh, of the £12 product. And once again, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do that. We're going to use the formula as we did before, first off. So it's the sum of XW, so it's 5 times 100, plus, remember, it's sum 7.5 times 190, plus 12 times 50. And then on the bottom, we want the sum of the weight. Well, we can let the calculator work the sum out for us. So let's just put our weights in, 100 plus 190 plus 50. And then press equals, and we've got a fraction in the first instance. Let's press SD. And here we have our weighted mean, 7.43 to two decimal places. And you can see that that look seems more realistic. Didn't we? We've sold substantially more of the £7.50 product and then a fair amount of the £5 product. We'd expect it to be maybe about £7.50 or a little bit less. And that's what we've got. So this is obviously a better measure of the average price of the goods sold than the arithmetic mean would be so in these circumstances we'd be better off using the weighted mean now i did tell you there's going to be a second way of doing this and this is sort of a little bit of a hack that we can do by using statistics mode so if you go to menu and then six four statistics what we're going to do we're going to select option two here y equals a plus bx and we can see that we've got two columns set up now we're going to put our values our x values our prices in this case in the x column and what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the w for a y so we're really saying y is is the weight uh, that we've got on here simply your calculator operates in x and y so it doesn't have that w feature so we're we're just going to have to act as if that's w so input your prices into the X column and then into the Y column. Just navigate to the first one. We're going to input the weights of the different products and press equals. And then when we have the statistics, Y equals A plus BX shown, then we press option and you need to just scroll down here. If you scroll down to the second page, we can see you've got one summation. If we choose that, and then we want to choose, well, if we think about our formula, our formula was sum of XW. Remember, we've substituted W for Y, so we want the sum of XY, which is 5, from our menu. And then divided by a fraction button. Here you can see that we're automatically in line mode. And then on the bottom, we want the sum of W. Well, remember, that's the sum of Y. So we want to choose 3 here and press equals. And again, we've got the fraction in the first instance. Press SD and here we've got a uh, weighted mean. Incidentally, you can do this where you have your weights as the frequency. There is a method that you can do that if you had a frequency column set up, but I would avoid using that just in case you have to work out weighted mean of a frequency distribution, in which case you're going to need the frequency column as an actual frequency column. So I would use the X and Y values, choose the second option there and calculate it like this. This is particularly useful if you have quite a number of different values. It might be more useful to use this rather than just use the, the fraction and work it, work it out in calculate mode. Simply, arguably, because you have to input less and calculator does most of the hard work for you there. So it's a useful hack if we substitute uh, W for Y in this case. So there we go, how we can work out the weighted mean and where it's quite useful. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.